What's up, Solo fam? My name is John Solo, and welcome to another episode of Messed Up Origins. A few weeks ago, we talked about the shockingly depressing novel that inspired Disney's Fox and the Hound, which shed some light on the delicate ecosystem that farmers, hunters, and wildlife share out in the rural parts of America. You guys absolutely loved it, and since then, I've gotten countless requests to cover another story all about hunting and wildlife, Bambi. I know what you're thinking. The Bambi movie is already pretty messed up, so the book is probably going to be straight up depressing, and yeah, you're right. Bambi, A Life in the Woods, was written by Felix Salton and published in Germany in 1923. It's similar to the film in that it shows you how unforgiving the world can be for nature's inhabitants. But unlike the film, it doesn't pull any punches or try to make you feel better with songs about springtime and flowers. Like we always do, before diving into the book, we're gonna do a short recap of the movie for those who haven't seen it in a while and need a refresher on what happens. If you're a fan of this series and want to see another episode next week, make sure to smash that like button with all your hearts we can reach our goal of 5,000 likes and subscribe and turn notifications on to make sure that video actually shows up in your sub box. Remember when YouTubers didn't have to ask their audiences to jump through so many hoops just to see the content they wanted? I miss those days. All right, on to the recap. The movie tells the story of Bambi, the son of the oldest and wisest deer who's ever lived in the forest called the Great Prince. We follow Bambi as he learns about life in the wild, how to walk, what he's allowed to eat, where he can play with his friends, Thumper and Flower, and other strategies deer need to know if they're going to survive. Like most children, Bambi is very attached to his mother and gains much of his wisdom through asking her questions and her correcting his mistakes. She also introduces him to a friend of hers and her fawn Feline and they seem to like each other. It doesn't take long for Bambi to find out just how dangerous living in the forest can be because one day while he's traveling through the meadow with his mother, they get shot at by a hunter and flee for safety with the help of the Great Prince. Fast forward a few months and we see Bambi during his first winter where he learns how the forest changes during this time from his Buddy Thumper. The good times ice skating and playing in the snow don't last long though as the hunters make their return to the wildlands and while Bambi and his mom are foraging for food, she's shot and killed. From this point forward, Bambi's father takes him under his wing and shows him the strategies he's used to survive for so long in the wild. When he returns the next spring, Bambi has gotten much older and is ready to find a mate, and who better than Feline? After he fights another deer named Rano and wins, he earns the rights to Feline's affections and you can figure out what happens next. Shortly after, Bambi Bambi wakes up to the smell of smoke, and it turns out the hunters have returned to the forest and their campfire is out of control. He flees with his father only to realize he's left Feline behind and turns around to find and rescue her. He shows up just in time to save her from the hunter's dogs, but he doesn't walk away unscathed. He ends up being shot in the shoulder and unable to walk, but his father tracks him down before the fire can get to him and escorts him to safety with Feline and the rest of the animals. The following spring, Feline gives birth to a set of twins, and Bambi takes over his father's place as the great Prince of the Forest. So the Bambi book is actually a lot like the movie, only I would say the events are a little more grounded in reality, and no one can deny that reality is harsh, especially to animals. There's also a more realistic depiction of parental roles when raising fawns. In the movie, Bambi's mother is nothing but nurturing, and the great prince is the benevolent father who watches him grow up from a distance, but still shows that he cares in the face of danger. You're about to find out just how neglectful parents in the animal kingdom can be, especially especially during mating season. But let's start from the beginning. Like the movie, the book follows a newborn fawn named Bambi, who's the son of the great prince, only he doesn't find that out for quite a while. Instead of the entire forest surrounding his mother talking about how cute he is, the only spectator of his birth is a single magpie who won't shut up about how hard it is to raise her own chicks. Typical suburban mom. I guarantee you she's on the Forest Parent Teacher Association and has this haircut too. Bambi's mother takes him to the meadow to meet some of the other forest inhabitants, including including Friend Hare, this version's Thumper, only he doesn't play a large role. Several of the animals, including Friend Hare, congratulate Bambi's mother on the fine young prince, only Bambi is so young and innocent, these words don't really mean anything to him yet. During Bambi's first ever walk in the woods, he overhears two jays arguing and threatening each other with a slow and painful death. He also sees a ferret killing a mouse, and he asks his mother if they're gonna have to kill a mouse at some point. She reassures him that they don't ever have to kill or get angry at anything, and Bambi seems 
seems relieved at the news. Just before they reach the meadow, Bambi's mother pulls him aside and gives him a warning about the dangers of not paying attention to your surroundings and just rushing out into the open. She also adds that if she ever tells him to run, he should run to the thicket as fast as possible, and if he sees her go down, he should keep going. As we all know, this is information he'll have to use. During a later trip to the meadow, Bambi's introduced to his Aunt Ina, her daughter Feline, and her son Gobo, and the three fawns get along great. So in this story, it's actually family friends Feline and Gobo who make up Bambi's inner circle and not Thumper and Flower. Sometime later, we have the book's version of that scene in the movie with all the stags, which plays out exactly the same, with the stags showing off how majestic they are as they run through the meadow. As time goes on, Bambi's mother becomes a lot less nurturing than she was when he was younger. In fact, on several occasions when he tries snuggling up with her to sleep, she pushes him away and tells him he's not a baby anymore. It turns out there's a reason he's getting the cold shoulder, and it's revealed the next morning when both his mother and his aunt have abandoned their children. It's mating season, and no stags were there booty calls. On one occasion, Bambi's father discovers him walking through the forest, crying for his mother, and scolds him for not being able to stay on his own for a while. His mother appears at some point to reclaim her son, but her sporadic absences continue throughout the summer. All of these deer being around for mating season eventually attracts hunters, and at one point, one of the stags is shot and killed. So another similarity with the movie is there's an initial hunter attack to foreshadow the second one that Bambi's mom dies in. During the winter months that follow, the deer in the forest begin to huddle together for warmth and and survival, and we're introduced to a few new interesting characters who join the group of Bambi, his mom, Feline, her mom, and her brother. One of which is a new agey younger doe named Marina, who thinks that someday the hunter will approach them in friendship, so like a hippie deer. And another is old Netla, an older doe who's a bit more cynical because she's been around the block a few times. And there's also two young princes named Rano and Caruse, and I guarantee I'm pronouncing that wrong. They're all huddled together talking about the hunter and his dreaded third hand that produces thunder when they realize he's approaching them in what appears to be from all sides. In other words, it's a group of hunters. There's a stampede and a mass shooting that follow this realization, and Bambi sees his mother fall down, friend hears May get shot in the leg and die of shock while bleeding out into the snow, and a group of pheasants that took to the air in fright get blasted. While running away, Bambi comes across Feline's brother Gobo lying on the ground injured. He was apparently a weak fawn and left behind because he couldn't keep up. The survivors of the massacre eventually find each other and consist of Bambi, Feline, Old Netla, Marina, Rano, and Caruse. Bambi's mom is never seen again, and when the deer go back to look for her and Gobo, all they can find are the footprints of the hunter and his dogs. While this is definitely a sad moment, it's not quite as depressing as it is in the movie because at this point in the story, Bambi's mom had had already started to pull back, trying to make himself sufficient. Also, he's with a group of survivors and has another older doe to help raise him. Another difference is at this point, Bambi's father is yet to do anything significant outside of yelling at his son. Now let's fast forward a few months to mating season. Bambi has grown into a handsome young buck, and unlike the movie where he and his friends roll their eyes at the idea of finding a mate, he's pretty excited to chase some tail. To no surprise, he sets his eyes on Feline and has to fight off two fellow suitors in Rano and Caruse, and afterward, he and Feline saunter off to presumably make sweet deer love. Having a female around is both a gift and a curse for Bambi, because at one point he almost gets himself killed when walking straight towards a hunter who is impersonating Feline's call. Bambi's father, the great prince, shows up out of nowhere to intervene and tells Bambi he should get his mind off the ladies and more on survival. In other words, to think with your other head every once in a while. Bambi takes this advice seriously and by the end of the mating season has basically lost all interest in Feline, which is pretty typical in the deer world. In Instead, he wants to chill with Pops and soak up all of his survival wisdom, so when Feline asks him the dreaded question, so where do you think this is going, he basically gives her the finger guns and walks away. Speaking of guns, let's take a minute to talk about the Hunter character. In the movie, the Hunters are portrayed as kind of stupid and careless, i.e. their campfire getting out of control and burning half the forest. In the novel, the Hunters are this all-powerful evil presence one would maybe liken to Satan or a very vengeful god. His presence is always looming over the forest and is constantly discussed by the animals. Interestingly, they only refer to the hunter as he or him spelled with capital letters, similar to how God is referred to in the Bible. Bambi actually comes face to face with him at one point and he's terrified of the tall, thin figure with the pale face. The deer all agree that for whatever reason, when they see the hunter, they can't help but freeze despite knowing that they should run. A prime example of how evil the hunters can be comes when Bambi stumbles upon another male deer that's acting kind of socially off and 
right when he's about to fight him, he realizes it's Feline's brother Gobo. Apparently, the hunter that shot Gobo felt bad about killing a fawn, so he brought him home, raised him to adulthood, and released him back into the forest. It sounds like a really sweet story, but tragedy strikes when Gobo finds his old master walking through the forest and approaches him to say hi, thinking they're cool with each other, and gets shot dead. Another pretty vicious scenario happens when Bambi and his father are hiding from a hunter's dog, which is chasing a fox. I know what you're thinking, but Fox and the Hound is not connected to this book, though I admit it would be pretty rad if it was. The dog eventually catches the fox, and the forest animals all start to shame him for betraying his cousin. But the dog echoes Gobo's words, saying that he is all-powerful and unstoppable, and those who align themselves with him will be spared. Then he rips out the fox's throat. As time passes, Bambi and his father grow closer and closer, and while they still don't have the ideal father-son relationship, the great prince is warming up to his son and starting to share some of his super secret survival tips. Tips like using old forest trails that humans and other animals rarely go on. Like living in a deep ditch under a dead tree trunk that's hidden from view. Bambi learns that in order to survive, you must stay hidden, travel alone, and rely only on yourself. Later on, when Bambi is shot in the shoulder, the Great Prince encourages him to keep moving similar to the movie, only so the hunter and dogs don't catch up to him. Also, to walk in a really large, long circle to throw them off his scent. His father also gives him shelter under his dead tree trunk to recover from his bullet wound, which was pretty nice. Once Bambi's made a full recovery, the Great Prince tells him he has one last lesson to teach him and leads him to a hunter's corpse lying on the ground covered in blood with a hole in his neck. This shows Bambi the hunter is not all powerful like the rest of the animals in the forest believe and that there's another more powerful presence watching over them. After the conversation is over, the Great Prince says his work is now finished and he must find a place to lie down and die. He calls Bambi his son for the first time, tells him he loves him dearly, and walks into the forest. This leaves Bambi to take over his role as the Great Prince, and he ventures alone for the rest of the book. Sometime later, Bambi catches sight of an aging feline, and later comes across two twin fawns who are crying for their mother and are implied to be his children. Bambi scolds the twins for not being able to be alone for a little while, walks into the forest, and the circle of life is complete. So that is Bambi, A Life in the Woods. Like I said, it's pretty similar to the movie, only instead of focusing on fulfillment through friendships and family, it basically does the opposite. It puts emphasis on the harshness of nature and how necessary it is to only depend on yourself. Also, Bambi taking over as the Great Prince doesn't mean he's the watcher of the forest like his father was in the movie. Instead, the Great Prince's responsibility is to survive for as long as possible and gain as much wisdom as he can along the way. Personally, I really like the values exemplified in both versions, so I'm excited to read your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to smash that like button if you like what I do here on the channel, want to keep it going and help us reach our goal of 5,000 likes, also subscribe and ring that bell to turn notifications on and consider sharing this video with a fellow Disney fan who you know will enjoy it. As usual, the best way to stay updated on Messed Up Origins news and what kind of content I'm working on next is to follow me on social media. I got links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram in the description below. I'll see you guys soon with even more Messed Up content. Until then, my name is John Solo and remember, John shot first. Thank you.